Hey, YouTubers, welcome back to World Zoom. Pleased you could join us uh, this morning or evening, uh, perhaps for you, but mostly in the morning. So, uh, anyway, nice to speak with you again. Hey, today's topic is going to be one of the ones I've had by popular demand. I'm trying to get through all the ones I see on a number of occasions. So uh, this one is uh, a little bit of a fun one. Uh, it's just what to buy in the Philippines or what to bring back home with you, what to purchase, what's unique uh, here in the Philippines. So I got some help so, from some professional uh, shoppers in this and they told me the items they like to get and our popular gifts when they go back to the West or wherever they're coming from. So I thought they were pretty interesting and, and I actually had some good ideas. I've actually seen some of these things but hadn't purchased too much. One I have purchased and I'll just lead uh, with it is the Filipino artwork. I don't know if you've noticed, especially in the cities of Cebu, uh, Davao City, and Manila, uh, sometimes they have those art festivals or art walks where you have the street artists, uh, you know, display and sell their artwork, whether along the fences or in the parks or different areas. I've even seen it, you know, in the smaller towns. But some of these guys have a great deal of talent and you know, it's nice to be able to get some quality artwork for your wall or just to roll it up and take it back home out of its frame or just if you're going to be here, ship the whole thing because the artwork is quality and it's very, very inexpensive in most cases. So a lot of these people haven't been discovered. Some may never be discovered, but they have quite a talent and whether they're working in acrylics or water, whatever uh, modem, uh, that they're working in, uh, you know, they, they have a lot of talents. And I really love like the carvings and the paintings uh, more than anything. So if I could recommend, you know, you can check on Facebook, uh, the marketplace and see when some of these fairs are and when some of the, uh, you know, art in the park and things like that are available to you to get in the cities and even flea markets when you're walking through uh, you know, in those type of markets. Uh, in one section, you can have clothes and tennis shoes and shorts. Another, you can have seafood. Uh, another, you know, you'll have your fruits and vegetables. And still, another section could have knickknacks and arts and crafts. And some of them are, are talented and you can buy them for penny, pennies on the dollar. So I'll lead with that as a recommendation because, uh, you know, I, I think those items are pretty nice. Uh, forgive me if I say this wrong, but Banig, Banig is how it was told to me. It's the woven mats that has all those symbols and the geometric uh, shapes uh, that you'll see a lot in Mindanao, uh, certainly in Leyte, but they're really all over uh, the Philippines. They're made of palm or whatever fibers, uh, you know, the, the natives of the province have available at that time, but they're quite colorful. They're quite inexpensive. They travel well, so you can get it, you know, into a small space. And, you know, I, I, I'm fascinated with the craftsmanship. It's similar, of course, to the Filipino artwork because it is artwork and it's also Filipino, but it's a different style. And I'll talk a moment about the carvings and the chests that they have too. But I don't think you can go wrong with that gift. You can get it in your luggage. You can get it in your carry-on or you can send it back and you know, it's, it's decidedly Southeast Asian type of flair, almost like a Jamaican or Caribbean Island uh, type of flair that you have on these woven mats. But um, they seem to be very popular gifts and, and they're inexpensive and in abundance here if you go to the right uh, area to, to find it. You know, I, I don't know about you know, how your families are, your grandkids, your kids, uh, nieces and nephews, kid, what, whatever it might be, even your parents in some cases. But all of my family loves currency. They love, and the coins. They love when I go to the place, whatever place I'm going to, they want to have the samples of each one of the notes and the coins 
uh, that are available in that country just to have it you know and display it or have it in a in a book so if you can uh, find the 20 and it, you know, of course you can the 20 the 50 the 100 200 500 and thousand peso notes and just find some crisp nice ones if you can and then go back and find the one peso five peso ten peso and the 20 peso coins i think those 20 peso coins look really cool you know with that red silver ridge around them and then the gold in the center i just think they just they really look like a high quality type of of coin and really i think would be collectible so anyway i'll gather up several sets of these when i travel whether it's thai bot or the cambodian reel or the the yuan the yen wh wherever it is uh, from what country I'm in, but certainly the Filipino peso uh, has some very cool currency, you know, different colors on each one of the bills like so many of the world countries do, and also some pretty uh, nice coins. You can go under the one peso too for those little uh, tiny fractional coins, but I always recommend bringing some of that home. It reminds you of where you've been and also makes a fun, fun gift uh, for kids that uh, just gets them interested in world travel, geography, and it's just a nice gift to be able to provide uh, when you go home. Uh, next is the Abaca uh, baskets. I, I, I'm sure you've seen these. I didn't know the name of them, obviously. Uh, the fiber comes from a banana, and uh, you know they're baskets, they're not expensive, they're durable. You can see a lot of the Filipinos, they'll blip, bring these baskets when they come to the market so when they're sorting and buying their fruits and vegetables you know they're having already a pretty cool item right there in their arms and they're actually because they're durable uh, they're putting their items you know in there as sort of like a, a carrying bag uh, to come to the market but but just in and of themselves i think those things are pretty cool so just sort of a nice gift you know, without packing it up. I mean, yeah, I'm sure the foreigners bring those to the market and, and also use those along with other type of bags. It's a good idea to bring uh, something along to put all those things in. But just having those Abaca uh, baskets just in and of themselves for you to display and store and have, uh, I think those are good gifts and something that would go well in your home or condo or apartment you know here in the philippines they certainly display well and they're durable uh next would be a funny one coconut wine so i've seen the guys i didn't even know there really was such a thing before although they can make you know wines and liquor you know about just about anything you know <laughs> and you see that you know in almost all cultures uh, this is called uh, Lambanog, Lambanog. When I mentioned that to Sheila, she's like, oh, that stuff will make you really drunk. So I know it has a very high uh, alcohol content, so it's quite potent. In addition, uh, it comes in a bunch of different flavors like a cinnamon, uh, blueberry, strawberry, uh, mango. Uh, so you get these wine, it, it comes in the bottles, right? So it has a unique flavors. It has a high alcohol content. The bottle is packaged nicely, so it actually has aesthetically, it has a very good appearance to it as well. So if you bring those and give those to gifts, you know, maybe they don't even drink it. Maybe they just put it in their wine cellar or collect it or, you know, put it in their cabinet, whatever. But if they do crack it open, and drink it, you know, I haven't tasted it. I'm not much of a drinker, but I certainly know a lot of people that, that like it and say it's pretty tasty, especially with the numerous type of flavors that are now available. So who would have thought coconut wine? Uh, that's, uh, that, that's pretty interesting, I think, and, and something at some point I'll just have to, uh, have to, have to try. Um, next to those bamboo uh, dressers, chest of drawers, uh, uh, the trunks, the artwork. I don't know if you've seen those, the things that they can make out of the bamboo. And some of them are quite large. They would go to like the foot of your bed or be a standalone trunk or cabinet uh, in and of themselves. 
you can find a whole range of prices on those. In, in Cebu one time I went to sort of a higher end uh, art shop near IT Park and man they were pricey. I mean there were multiples of hundreds of US dollars. I've also seen those trunks for you know $30 and $35 uh, US dollars. So, you know, 1,500 pesos and you're getting a pretty nice, and it's pretty sturdy. You know how bamboo lasts and, you know, w w we see construction places here where they're using bamboo instead of scaffolding. And certainly in Thailand, you see it all the time. They'll build bamboo scaffolding three, four, five stories tall to, to build and construct a building or do a remodel. So if you know if you if you see them using these big giant bamboo poles and they're walking on them with like bare feet, you know, just all on that. So if they're strong enough to build scaffolding out of, I think they're uh, definitely strong enough to, um, you know, to build uh, furniture out of and, and the the skill set and i just can't imagine looking at a, a bamboo and knowing i have to separate that i like the darker colors especially if you've seen those but the intricate designs that they carve and put in this bamboo so you get a piece of furniture that's going to last you know forever really and has a story the only other places i've really seen that quality of work is in like indonesia and Malaysia and if you guys have been to those places you might have seen this type of artwork that they have in their wood type uh, objects or in this case the bamboo objects there's a whole different set of talents in in wood carving uh, that that they do here but they do look similar to what I've seen in Indonesia and just here there's so much less so much less than what you pay in in Bali or Jakarta or some of the areas uh, that are there in Indonesia. So get a couple of those. Uh, admittedly, they're difficult to travel and to send, uh, but if you're going to be here for a period of time and you can get a nice piece of art like that for your house uh, inexpensively, you know, why not? I like to have those things in the house. <clears throat> uh, next is seashells. Uh, that may sound funny to you, but I have to admit, sometimes when I'm spear fishing, I'm looking for seashells as much as I am sometimes the fish to spear. I'm just fascinated with collecting and diving down and, and getting the shells, especially when I collect them myself. I have a stinky kitchen or an outdoor kitchen here, and when I gather up the seashells, you can't really leave them in your house. You don't know what critters are inside them, and they just smell so bad. So I'll just line the seashells up outside and then once they dry in the sun and whatever's in there is, in, is out, uh, you know, then I can bring them, you know, into the house. But uh, you don't have to go that route. You don't have to collect them yourself, although it's fun, you know. If, you, if I leave Dumaguete and go across on the ferry, which is like 20 minutes to Cebu, to the island, Man, if you walk along those resorts or those areas or just dive in that water, there's like some of the best seashells. And I know there's tons of places in the Philippines that are known for the beautiful shells. But also in stores, I was talking more about not gathering them, but actually going in and buy, buying them. But they make lamps out of them. They have the big, like I call the conks, if you remember the Key West conks and some of those shells that you can hold up to your ear and still hear the sound of the surf you know fun things like that but there's also just like the roller shells and some of the smaller shells i don't know all the titles of them and all the names of them but i do know i like to walk the beaches and collect them and if i can find some beautiful ones you know in the stores that they've turned into other things i also find those you know quite attractive and you know, I just, I don't know, I, I like to look at the shells. If you can have two or three, they're sort of like plants to me. If you can put a couple in your house and it brings back memories of where you got it or where you purchased it, it just has sort of that ocean type feel. So even if you're in the middle of America, you know, 1,500 miles from any salt water, uh, you know, you can still have these shells to be able to look at because you've packed them and, and brought them home. Uh, wood carvings, I, I talked a, a little bit about that uh, uh, when I was talking about how they do the bamboo dressers. 
but these guys can carve some wood. And you might have seen that so many places, any of the Pacific Islands, you know, uh, even in Hawaii, if you're around the natives, they can carve some wood. But certainly here in the F Philippines, they carve things a little bit different. It's not like tiki's or things like that you might see in Samoa or Fiji uh, or Hawaii or wherever. Uh, uh, but these are more like carvings of, of utensils sometimes, bowls, uh, plates, almost like a whole dinner type set where you have the plate, you have the knife, the fork, and the spoon. Uh, you have like a separate little small wooden area that you can put your utensils on. But I'm not even quite sure what, it looks almost like rosewood to me. I don't know. Uh, you know, if it is exactly that, but that's what it looks like and what it smells like to me is rosewood, but correct me in the comments of exactly what kind of wood uh, they're carving with, but, um, you know, they've got a talent. They can carve almost anything, and it's so inexpensive, you know, if you try and buy some of those, you know, in, in some other places, certainly in the mainland, you know, in the U.S., those kind of imported Southeast Asian or Pacific Island bowls and such, especially if they're like koa or things like that, they're, they're just obscenely expensive. So here you can get them on the cheap and send them home and impress your friends and family. Um, next to last is pearls. Uh, you know, certainly this area is known for the South Sea pearls. They have a interesting sort of like a golden tint if you've known us like i came from dubai which was sort of founded uh on the pearl industry but these pearls look different they're the oysters themselves look different and the pearls uh look different so um you can buy i don't know the different qualities i can't tell and i'm not talking about the pearls you buy from the vendors down on the boulevard that you know, look completely plastic and probably are plastic. Maybe they really are. They always light them and whatever that's supposed to do. But I'm talking about, you know, maybe buy, uh, you know, a couple, you know, pearl earrings or pearl bracelet or even a necklace from there. I just like the golden tint. There's not, these type of pearls that are here, I really haven't seen uh, anywhere else. I, I haven't traveled that much in Korea. I mean, I've been to Seoul and Juju Island and uh, Busan, but I haven't really been that much uh, on the coastal islands, but I understand the pearls are somewhat similar uh, there to here, but uh, I think that'd be a great gift. That would certainly impress your girlfriend or mom or dad or kids, because uh, they just, I, I don't know, they're not that pure white and they're not the black. Uh, they're not the pewter, they just are like the white with like that golden tinge, friend, fringe around it. I think they're quite attractive and quite beautiful. But I couldn't tell you if like they're a high quality compared to other pearls, you know. In Hawaii, I always used to go to those little kiosks and you could buy the oyster and then they would like pop it open and you'd have, you know, one of those little pearls in it. You could take the pearl or have them make like a piece of, of uh, jewelry for you. And I'm sure those were cheap pearls, but it was fun, you know, just uh, hoping that your oyster is going to have a pearl that's enough size they can make something cool out of. And they did a pretty good job. Uh, I know that's very touristy, but, you know, I was a tourist, so it was fun. And lastly, a pina cloth. It's like a fabric made from the pineapple leaves. So, uh, if you've seen some of the traditional weddings here, you'll see some of the wedding dresses are unbelievably uh, beautiful and made in its entirety uh, with these leaves, these pineapple leaves. Again, I don't know how they do that, but I saw, uh, I thought of this one because when I was at, uh, um, I think which mall it was. Anyway, it was in Manila. I can't remember if it was Ayala or Asian. I can't recall at this point, but they had like a men's like slacks, like a summer type of slacks pants. And they were made from these like trousers and shorts. They were made of this uh, cloth, this pina uh, cloth. And they were like soft. They felt really nice and it felt durable. And it, it was very, very attractive. You know, usually if I get a pair of pants like that, they're like sort of baggy and white. 
you know, and you can walk, wear them walking on the beach and roll them up a little bit, walk in the surf, or you know the type of pants I'm talking about. So these are, were similar to that, some in the shorts um, fashion, some in the long pants, blouses, shorts, but of course the coolest thing were the wedding dresses, and, and these were some high-end dresses that were in that mall. Uh, some of you will know and tell me what store that was and, and what it's there. So, so here's some fun things uh, for you to buy, some of the popular 10, 12 items that you can bring back to the West or Europe or Australia to please uh, your family. Again, I had help uh, from the women uh, in my life to help me with this list. So if I was going to give you a list of gifts to buy, yeah, you probably should ignore it. But these actually came some people that, you know, actually have some know of what women and people might want from the Philippines. So anyway, thanks so much. Hit the subscribe button, if you will. Once again, I forgot to the very end of the video. When I don't write it down, I never remember. So Bob and I will see you later. We're gonna go to Valencia to check out the market and I'm gonna get some cinnamon rolls. So we will see you tomorrow. Bye.